Hello, today we're, today we're going to be installing PySpark on Mac. So, before I get started, I'll just let you know I'm going to have a full set of instructions located on my GitHub. You'll just click the link below and you can, you know, see this image or IPython notebook. And there'll be a couple other formats where you can just go through, see how you download Spark, unzip it, and set your environmental variables so you can, you know, load a Spark notebook whenever you want. Uh, a quick note uh, for Python 3 users, the instructions are a little bit different. So just quickly, you'll basically just add another environmental variable um, right after this line before you get to the alias S notebook. Or I'll get to that later. So the first thing we have to do is go to the official Apache Spark page so you can you know download Apache Spark. So you'll see this page over here. And basically you choose a Spark release. I like 1.6.0. Do whatever you like. Um, choose a package type. I choose pre-build for Hadoop 2.6 or later and later. Uh, choose a download type. I prefer direct. And then you'll get a link to directly download Spark. Uh, this will be a zip file. So we're going to have to unzip it later. So you click on this, you can either open it if you want, or you can save this file, and it'll be a couple minutes. So in the meantime, I will either pause this video or keep on going. I choose keep on going. So after you get in the downloads folder, uh, a key important step is to make sure you have Java installed. Java can be a little bit frustrating, so if you have any problems, Please feel free to leave a comment, and I'll get, I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. So, the first thing we have to do is essentially unzip the file and move it to our home directory. If you don't know where that is on Mac, I will show you. So, um, the way to get to your home directory from wherever you are is first uh, open up a terminal, and then do cd, and then this little squiggly line here. And then I'll get to you to your home directory. If you're not sure what that is, after you do the, that command, do pwd, and this is my home directory. So the next thing I have to do is we're going to have to move um, Spark from our downloads folder, which is where this is downloading to, to our home directory, and then zip it there. You can zip it anywhere and move it to your home directory, I guess. Whatever makes you happy. So I'm going to pause the video, allow you to do that, and come back. Okay. So now the file is downloaded. It's good. So uh, first, I'll just show you that it's in your downloads folder. So CD downloads, or in the downloads folder, ls, and look, we have Spark um, zipped in our downloads folder. Now, if you want to unzip it, feel free to do a different method if you prefer. If you just want to do it, you know, simple, just follow this command, copy paste. And if you use a different version of Spark, if you want 1.6.1, you know, change this right here, and you'll be okay. So I'm going to unzip it. And now we can check that folder to see if it unzipped, ls. And you'll see that this is unzipped. The next thing you have to do is move to your home directory. Because I already have Spark installed, I'll let you do that. But essentially it's mv, um, this file, and then the path to your home directory. And so once you do that, you go to your home folder, or your home directory, cd, in my case, uh, tilde. And now I'm in my home directory. So if you want to see that's in your home directory after you move it there, do ls. And then you can see that you have uh, Spark in your home directory. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set environmental variables on our computer. So that when we want to open a Spark notebook from any directory, um, no matter where we are on a computer, we'll be able to open a Spark notebook. 
So step five in my um, instructions mean to use ls um, and then the parameter a. The reason why we're doing this is just to see that you have a bash profile. Um, chances are you have one. So ls a and look, where is my bash profile? Oh look, I have a bash profile. So the next thing you want to do is you want to edit your bash profile. So you can use any sort of text editor, or IDE, whatever makes you happy. I'm going to use nano and dot bash profile. And so this part over here that um, I've added in here, um, I'll go through it really quickly. So essentially, you're setting your Spark path, and you're configuring the environmental variables so that when you type a command in the command line, in my case, I made an S notebook, you can change this to anything you want, Kitty, um, Spark, as long as you don't have a current command in your computer that you know, uh, you can't change this to CD or something because that's already a command in your command line. So this over here, um, this two, is how many cores you're going to dedicate um, to this, you know, once you call S Notebook. And if you're curious about how many cores you have in your computer, you can just go um, to about this Mac and then system report. And you can see that you have, you know, however many cores you have. I have four, so I could set this number up to four if I really wanted to, but I'm just using Spark to test something before I put in the cloud, so I'm not all, you know, um, focused on performance. So after you set these environmental variables, um, again, you can make S Notebook whatever you want, um, exit out and save. So if you want to, um, after you exit out your bash profile, a good idea is to close this and then open a new terminal and then try the command s notebook or whatever you put it as. Um, or you can use source um, bash profile. And essentially what that would do is allow you to not close your profile and it'll auto update basically and allow you to call S Notebook, you know, anywhere in your computer now. So just to see if this works, I will do S Notebook, and it looks like I can do Spark on my computer. Again, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to ask. Um, I will do my best to help you. If not, I'll give you great links to resources to figure this out. Again, I hope you have a great day and please subscribe if you can. Thanks.